Hello and welcome to Efficient Strategy Gaming. Today's video is going to be for beginners. So if you're new to Hearts of Iron 4, you've come to the right place. Start here. I have other beginner guides on my channel. And if you enjoy more country guides and some more uh, different types of play styles, check out Bitter Steel's video here in the link in the upper right hand corner of the screen or down in the description box below. Today, we are going to be playing January 1st, 1936 as Germany. The crux of the build today is we're gonna be building two types of equipment. We're gonna be building the car 98K, which is your starting infantry equipment, and you're gonna be building fighters. And that's it. Just to show you that you can play this game with very little equipment. Okay, so we'll go 18 on Car Carabiner, building up to 50, and then we will go start off with 10 on the BF-109, and let's build that up to, let's say 50. So, very simple. We're gonna be going 50 on infantry equipment and 50 on fighter. The Navy, as Germany, is not as important. You're gonna be doing land-based battles and the crux of the whole thing is Asia. Can you beat the Soviet Union? And then I'm just gonna put convoys down at the bottom. All of these ships will come out and we could just hit F3 here. I'm sorry, F2. And let's just uh, make there, let there be two navies. So there's gonna be a main navy and we'll put Eric Rader as the admiral of that, and then a sub navy, and Donitz is going to be the admiral of the sub navy. And the important thing here is that the subs are very slow and can't keep up with the other types of ships, and the subs are only good for convoy raiding. So you don't want them mixed in with the ships because your main fleet is gonna be doing amphibious landings mostly. The best thing to use for convoy raiding is subs. Let's go ahead and place these boats in the different navies here. The infantry equipment will flow into your divisions automatically. So you don't have to worry about that. And just don't worry about the Navy. If we're gonna do an amphibious landing, we'll use the Navy. If not, just leave it alone. This game is a snowball ramp. So you want to start building up your economy as fast as you possibly can. Bearing that in mind, what you want to do is start off by researching economic things that is going to allow you to increase your economy and produce more stuff so that you can win your battles on land and in sea. So the basic machine tools is going to increase your production efficiency cap. The crux of this build is you conserve a lot of efficiency with your production lines due to the fact that you start off the beginning of the game, turn one, with maximum production efficiency on the car carabiner and the BF-109. So if you see a red line here, that means that you're going to have to build production efficiency over time. And it also means, after I research basic machine tools, uh, a red line will appear. I'll demonstrate that for you later because the production efficiency cap will increase and slowly over time, you're going to get better at producing these equipment, these pieces of equipment, and the red line will reduce. So we are going to be able to put out a massive number of car carabiners in BF-109s. And I assure you, these are the only two pieces of equipment that you absolutely need in the game. The Holy Trinity of Hearts of Iron 4 is first, green air, second, supply, and then I would say like way behind a third is division template. So those that's my Holy Trinity right there. Control the skies and basically supply your troops and then you worry about everything else later, like division templates. And you're, we're not going to worry about that. While we're on that topic, let's take a look at our division template here. So to adjust this, we're not going to need to adjust it at all. What we're going to do is rush down and uh, we're going to Anschluss Austria, or basically core Austria. 
and that will give us a division template that we can modify that is going to suit our needs. So basically you take out the support equipment and you'd only have uh, this starting um, 18 width infantry template. Uh, the rest of the equipment we will keep just for demonstration purposes, but we will not build that equipment. So if I run out of tanks, then we basically will have to delete a division, which is fine. The good thing is our neighbors in France do have tanks and our neighbors in Austria do have support equipment. So we can start off with these starting divisions and not alter them whatsoever. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to hit F1 and we're going to set up the army. So Germany is really easy because of World War I. They don't have any colonies. You don't have to look around the world for any types of divisions that are like on the other side of the world it's just all here in germany and if you want to get everything really easy you go shift left click and that will select all your your ground divisions and then you right click them into an army now we're going to create another army let's see what we got here we have one mountain division a bunch of infantry divisions three tank divisions a motorized division and a cavalry division so let's go ahead and shift left click all these divisions and go ahead and separate the quote unquote faster divisions into uh, this army right here. So just like with the fleet, we have fast ships and slow ships, the same as in land, as in land and as in sea, you're going to pair the U-boat expert with the U-boat fleet and the regular fleet with uh, your best other admiral. So that's what we're going to do with the generals as well. Okay, we got tanks. Well, use Heinz Guderian. You can upgrade him as soon as you have enough command power to Panzer Expert. Army, armor Division Defense 10%. But ESG, that's Division Defense. What do I care? Don't tanks attack? Yes, but you can only conquer land that you can hold. So defense is quite a big concept in this game. And we'll go into other concepts as we go through the game here. Uh, but basically, you're going to have him as a general and then a good starting field marshal. I like Gunther von Kluge because organizational loss when moving, negative 30% and attack plus one, as well as the armor officer allows um, for Guderian to get more experience. He's kind of already maxed out, though, so that's not going to really be that much of a factor. But you can see here that the field marshal of uh, Kluge has skill four on attack, and that's going to trickle down to all the other divisions in his uh, army group. Now, ESG, how do I know that I have enough equipment uh, that is being prepared to flow into these divisions? Do I have to manually add the equipment? Well, not really. You just need to build it under the production screen here and then under your logistics screen, you will see if there is a deficit. As you can see, we have uh, a deficit of 220 fighters because the fighter wings that we start off with are not topped off. So we will top that off and this older equipment will be sunsetted. Uh, in terms of army equipment, if you go under the division template and you click the button equipment, you can actually turn off and on whatever equipment you want to flow into these divisions. Now, if I turned off support equipment, but I have a regiment that requires support equipment, that's going to put you at a disadvantage. So watch out for that. So there is an engineer company in this division template. So I would not turn off support equipment for any reason. Uh, however, uh, you could delegate your basic infantry equipment to resistance suppression and the infantry equipment. Uh, you could just the infantry equipment one, which is better. You could just have that in your division template. Uh, but right now we're just going to uh, basically keep everything on. I find that that's the best way. If you over micromanage these aspects of the game, you start to get into a lot of problems. That's why I'm showing you this build with just two uh, types of equipment being produced and this Navy that that's already here, basically, and that can produce out and uh, 
we click these buttons on the top so that they'll automatically flow into these different navies. So very simplistic design. In order to set up the Air Force, you can just, let's see here, I think you hit F3, and then you could just simply left click and hover over everything, swipe, and then put them into like one air base to kind of see what you have. And I like just turning on uh, the different missions and there's just going to be two basic flavors of what we're doing here. Uh, we're going to be doing air superiority with fighters and with tactical bombers and CAS, close air support. We're just going to be doing close air support missions. A third type is naval bombers, and I just usually put them on naval strike. And uh, you put them close to a sea zone, put them on naval strike, and you're going to be able to start blowing the enemy navies out of the water. And uh, it can be quite powerful. So you don't actually need Navy on Navy action. You could just use these naval bombers, bombers to defeat navies. Granted, if you're trying to defeat navies in the mid-Atlantic mid or something like that, you're not going to be able to get there. So that's that only really works for like coastal uh, patrols and things like that. That's the basic setup there. Uh, other research slots. So a good thing to do would be to start electronic mechanical engineering. It increases your research speed by 3%. However, the only real reason why I go for this is the best research in the game if you're going to do land combat, and almost all of you will, is radio. So the reinforcement rate is kind of a complex mechanic that we're not going to describe in this video. And coordination uh, are very huge stats. So just know that. Uh, the stats that are the most important, the reinforce rate. Um, so make sure that you pick up radio before you start war. Okay, the other thing that we could do since we are heavily reliant on infantry equipment is we could start off building the MG-08. So what's weird about Hearts of Iron 4 is this is 1918 equipment. We should already have it. Uh, they had the Gewehr 98 in World War I. Uh, I'm not sure about the MG-08, but that should have already been researched. Uh, they make you kind of research it again. You can largely ignore all the other research types. We are going to either be researching uh, radio and then industry, or basic infantry equipment, just to make things incredibly simple. The next thing that we'll do, we'll simulate a production ramp here. The yellow civilian factories, they are what builds everything else in this menu. The second best thing is gonna be military factories, the third best being naval dockyards if you need a navy. Um, so you build the sieves first, and then you could build everything else faster. I never convert my mills to sieves, so you can do that with this button. I wouldn't recommend it. There's a lot of myths out there. I've been playing this game for five years, and let me tell you, taking something that is an asset and basically turning it into another thing that is kind of a pseudo asset is not going to be worth your time. You're taking away, you're reducing your economy uh, for a small increase in your production value. Do not convert uh, your sieves uh, to mills or vice versa. It is completely a waste of time. So don't worry about that. Uh, synthetic refineries, Army, Navy, Air Force, they're all going to use it unless you're just doing leg infantry or horse. And... The synthetic refineries don't just produce fuel, it also produces rubber. And Germany is going to have a lot of problems with fuel and rubber. Now, we can get away with trading for fuel with Romania. However, the Allies have all the rubber. So we're not going to be able to get away without building synthetic refineries first. So the way the Civ ramp is going to work for Germany, specifically, and a lot of other nations is going to be civilian factories till 1938, military factories, and uh, you start building mills, you know, January 1938 as a frame of reference. Now, if you want to be really 
kind of like a more OP build, like a multiplayer build, you'd start building military factories in about October 1937. Now, naval dockyards were going to ignore because we don't need a big navy. We need to fight that land war in Asia. Conversely, you could build railways to increase your logistics. As I said before, you will need logistics and don't ever build supply hubs. They're very expensive, not useful. You can build naval bases situationally, and the naval bases will give you excellent supply, but only about two tiles away from the naval base. So if you're having problems with supply, and let's say you're up in Estonia, and there's a little piece that you have no supply, you could pop in just one level of naval base, and it'll bring your supply up drastically. So that's a little trick there with logistics. Last trick in regards to logistics is having 10 out of 10 infrastructure in your capital. Your capital is going to be marked with this star right here. And if you left click on the province, all the supply for your nation, for your armed forces, is going to arise from the capital. And I'm not a big mathy guy here, but it is on a kind of logarithmic scale. So distance from the capital and all the different uh, provinces up to the point at which you need to supply that infrastructure and rail level and uh, supply hub level will matter, but not as much as having 10 out of 10 infrastructure in your capital. So Germany is going to get 10 out of 10 in, uh, infrastructure in their capital from their focus tree. Other nations will not have that option, and we'll get that through Reich's Autobahn, and we will get that before we need to go to war with USSR. So Reich's Autobahn is right here, and I'll take you through the progression of focus tree next. So let's just go ahead and build the civilian factories, avoiding the areas that are going to become 10 out of 10 infrastructure, uh, because the 10 out of 10 infrastructure areas will build quicker, and um, we want to save those for the expensive refineries. So do not build in Brandenburg, Hanover, Thurgen, or Franken. And build everywhere else, the civilian factories where it says 80% because they will build faster. So that is going to be these blue areas right here. As our technology increases, we will be able to build more more of whatever in these provinces, but the blue represents that you're maxed out at this point. So your technology, uh, basically concentrated or dispersed, will allow you to build more in each individual province so that you can get more of an eco. Now, starting out, I'm going to show you a technique that I spearheaded that is going to be ahistorical, but it's incredibly beginner and friendly because... What you're going to be able to do is propagate war quickly and steal equipment from your neighbors instead of building it yourself. So we'll go ahead and go Rhineland first. And Rhineland is going to basically take off some of the stipulations of the Treaty of Versailles, where Germany was not allowed to occupy Rhineland right here. As you can see, I cannot put a division in this area marked in red. There are these areas in several places in the map that are impassable and they're marked by this red kind of fortress line. Um, like you can't go into the middle of the Sahara. Uh, and this is actually a good thing. Uh, another thing about these red lines is that there is a invisible supply zone in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere that is low supply so if you're thinking about like invading canada basically canada is a low supply zone it's going to be hard for logistics in that area when you get up into like north of uh like finland here like north of leningrad you're going to start running into a lot of logistical issues luckily you only need to really get murmansk you don't really need to come up here into Russia. There's not really victory points up there uh, so that you can conquer the USSR. In terms of trade, if we start getting into trade deficits, that is going to give us production penalties. Because we do not have enough rubber, uh, we are having a production penalty. See here, if you hover over this yellow bar, 
Lack of resources, negative 27.5%. So that's quite a big hit. So I'm going to go back on this and let's trade one civilian factory away for eight rubber. And we will still have a deficit of two rubber. But if we go back to our production screen, you see that now production is only hindered 1.5%. So now we're sitting pretty and we're going to be able to produce these planes very quickly to meet the requirements of Anschluss and to eventually go Danziger War. Um, we're going to need to have our army size uh, be at a certain level. I think Anschluss is around half a million. Right now, we only have about 250, like a quarter of a million in the field. We need to pump out troops even if they don't have equipment in order to meet the requirements of Anschluss and Danziger War so that we could kind of do a mini speed run here and um, uh, basically take all the mills, sieves, economy, equipment of our neighbors really quickly. Using this technique is a little funky. Uh, I think we have everything set up here. So we're just going to stay on the recruit and deploy screen and as you can see as we're producing equipment that equipment is filling up the divisions and the divisions are able to train so this one does not have enough equipment to train i'm going to digress let's take that off let's just train up cavalry brigades it's a much smaller manpower brigade but as you can see we could use a lot more of that infantry equipment in these brigades and then what we'll do is deploy them as fast as possible and then turn them into trucks. Trucks have almost 12,000 manpower and that is going to increase our army size very quickly. So I just stay on this screen and left click this arrow as fast as I can to deploy these divisions quickly because we're capped off here at just deploying 43 divisions. As Soon as you deploy them, I shift left click and then I'm able to, it, it kicks out two or three more uh, divisions, so it's a lot quicker. You have to do less clicking if you shift left click on add unit. So we're just going to keep doing this until we get a bunch of divisions in the field. After this uh, goes, this number of divisions goes up to about 70. You don't really need to add any more units. So we just got an uh, achievement to deploy 100 cavalry or camelry battalions. And uh, you get that if you're on Iron Man mode. Okay, our second focus tree is going to be Army Innovations. And this focus is going to allow us to get Doctrines. We'll get into that a little bit later. And it will allow us to get Erwin Rommel, which buffs tanks. And Germany is a tank nation. This is not a tank build, so we won't be getting Rommel. But if you want to play historically, you want to pick up Rommel. So we're back on this screen and we'll just continue to deploy as many divisions as possible. Oh, and the other thing that happens is we now have enough political power. So we will be able to do free trade. So free trade first on most nations. I usually don't adjust this if I if the starting trade of the nation is export focus. But if you're on closed economy or limited exports and go up to free trade, this is incredibly powerful. Uh, so you're going to get a 10% increase to construction speed. Uh, you're going to get a 9% increase to research speed. Factory output is going to go up by 10% as well as dockyard output. So picking up free trade first with the political power that you have. Very powerful. Most powerful thing uh, for that you could do with political power early game. So now as these divisions kick out, you're going, there's going to be these double arrows here and you're going to turn them into the motorized division. And the tan bar is going to be really low because we're not building trucks. We're not building artillery. We're not building support equipment. The amount of manpower allocated to each division though, will still be maxed out even if they don't have equipment. So this will help us get our army size up quickly. So we could just uh, keep them there. As a matter of fact, we could add them to a new army, maybe uh, take half of them and put them in Von Witzelbin's army. And let's just start lining up troops uh, for Poland because that 
is the first thing that is a decent sized nation. Poland actually has a decent amount of resources. And in terms of like pseudo minor nations, Poland actually has the biggest economy. Uh, if you're talking about Czechoslovakia, Austria, Hungary, Yugoslavia, Romania, I think Italy's economy is maybe just a little bit bigger, uh, but almost equivalent to Poland. So Poland is quite the prize. It yeah, will take our tank army and just put them here. I like to put them here in the middle so that they could rush to the capital. Warsaw, where there's a lot of VPs. And then I like to put Witzelbin over here in this uh, mountainous area of Silesia. And then let's give this to von Munstein. Von Munstein is good to promote to a field marshal. You could use him as your field marshal. We're not going to get into that, but he just has a lot of bonuses that are, are really good. The other thing you could do is the priority of the equipment to high priority. And that way, all the equipment flows from your stockpile into training this division template first. There's garrisons, uh, supply, upgrades, and reinforcements. So as you can see, a lot of the divisions in the field lack equipment. Um, so you can play with this. I usually just keep it right down the middle. A second good pickup here is to pick up Halder, Army Offense. And that gives it all of our divisions on the ground division attack of 10%. So this is quite powerful. Uh, the most powerful military advisor that you can get besides Rommel if you're using tanks. So since we're not using tanks, Halder is going to be the most powerful advisor that you can get. And what he's going to do is grant us a 0.3 of military of army experience daily and we'll get into later what you can do with that army experience okay let's go ahead we picked up army innovations and now we meet the requirements of half a million manpower in the field uh that we need to pick up Anschluss, uh the annexation of austria and we're doing that a little bit earlier historically that happened in about 1938 let's also change this over to more truck And what we could do here is pick up like Von Bach and just put these guys like on the Netherlands. A good place to hold is like the Maginot line here. Um, if you're playing historically, when you attack Poland, uh, France will attack into you. With this play style, that's not going to happen. Okay, so we'll just continue on here. We'll pick up improved machine tools. And we'll pick up concentrated industry. The difference between concentrated industry and dispersed industry. If I'm playing historical, I go dispersed. If I'm playing this way, I'm going to go concentrated industry. Uh, because we're going to be able to overwhelm our opponents. And I don't expect to be bombed that much. But if you play this game historically uh, and you're going to get bombed, you're going to want that... Factory bomb vulnerability, negative 15%. Uh, so you always go dispersed and you'll have bonus to bonuses to switching up production lines, uh, which we won't be doing in this build, but you do get that with dispersed industry. Um, conversely, concentrated industry is just going to give you a raw bonus of 5% uh, military factory output. And that is these uh, military factories right here in green. And as you can see, the red bar is increasing. So that will decrease over time um, as our production efficiency, as we become more efficient at producing these said equipment types. Uh, the chromium we're going to ignore because that's for these battleships. They can come out slower. We don't really care. It's only May 36, but we're going to get go into war quickly. The way that I told you to set up your economy was for a historical build. Since we're going to do a speed run right here uh, and we're going to have war pretty quickly, what I'm going to do instead is just start to build uh, mills. So we'll build mills in the same exact locations that we're building sieves. So we kicked out a few civilian factories and now we'll get 
a lot of military factories to uh, fill up our divisions and our air wings with equipment. Okay, setting up for war here. Um, a big no-no is to overstack your uh, air wings on a single airport. So make sure that this airport is not in red, which means that you're overstacked. Your air force will not work well at all if you do that. And you'll, as we get into combat, you want the air zones to be green when you're in F3, the air mode here. Um, and that is a sign of air superiority. And the air superiority affects the ground troops in multiple ways. They're faster, they have better combat effectiveness, they attack better, they defend better. Just all around, green air, best thing in the game. Um, so as these air wings fill up, we can kind of manipulate them. It looks like uh, we could just move these guys closer to where we want to attack. And then if you want to use some command power, you can make, uh, you can get more ground crews, which puts the airplanes in the sky more often. Let's go ahead and pick up MG-34. So a good rule of thumb, unless you're going way ahead of time, is don't research a research past 340 days because there's a a head of time penalty that is quite crippling and it's not going to be worth your time. So if it says 340 or less, that's my cutoff for researching it. And I only research ahead of time two things, tank chassis and plane chassis but that's for another build okay we have enough army experience so let's go ahead and take the engineer company out of here so you just have strict basic uh infantry equipment flowing into this division um it's not going to need any other type of, of equipment other than the guns so very simple very effective and it looks like we could even change more of these divisions into that template. Okay, we picked up Reassert Eastern Claims and we'll go for Danzig or War. And we get Mamel, this little province here, gives us two civs and one military factory. So this is a bit of RNG, this is a really good one. So picking up this was very good. And if you guys wanna see what territories we're currently occupying, we are currently occupying Lithuania only. And what I like to do is go off military governor and go to civilian oversight. And the reason why is you will start off after like a peace conference occupying territories and you'll have zero compliance. The people did not like that you conquered their country, but compliance will rise over time and you will occupy the territories that you have conquered with divisions that are out of the game. You don't see them, but you can see them here. And the best division to occupy territories is actually just a strict tank regiment division, but the second best is going to be cavalry brigade. Um the Schnell division that you get from Austria just has horse in it. That's going to be best. So if you look at your division template, suppression is 8 but each one of these reg regiments suppresses at two. Now you're thinking, why don't I add a bunch of horse? Because the AI automatically modifies um, how many divisions go into the occupied territories. You don't have to worry about it. Just make sure that the template is all horse, you're done. Go to civilian oversight, then compliance will gain quicker, which will gain you more factories and more resources and manpower over time. Um, and just making sure that you have enough, all this division is going to need is basic infantry equipment. You're going to eventually need to make sure that you have enough equi infantry equipment and manpower to feed this occupied territory division template. World tension is only 20%. At about 40% world tension, that's when the allies start, uh, backing other countries. If we declared war and world tension before that was 40% before declaring war, the UK and the allies would have backed Poland and then you're at war with them as well. So this strategy is going to allow you to take out one nation at a time. The thing that you don't want to do is be all over the place and at war 
on two fronts like Germany did twice historically. Okay, I just wanted to show you a quick trick here with the navies. Let's put our main navy here on strike force. And so they will hold the Danish belts. Strike force means that they're sitting in port waiting for a, a visible navy to attack. So if you detect a navy in these two Z zones, they'll come out and attack. Let's take these navies here, the sub navy, and we'll put them on convoy rating. That's what subs do gr best. The other thing that we could do is maybe split this navy in half. We can assign them Boehm or something like that, and then just stick them outside of Danzig to show you the shore bombardment technique. Okay, Poland refuses to cede Danzig, so we gain base war support because we completed that focus tree. Oh, France gains war support, rather. Sorry about that. So there's no bonuses, except we now have a war goal against Poland. So I'm going to move this navy over so that we can shore bombard along the coast here of Danzig, which is kind of a hard area to get into. And you see Danzig was actually a free city uh, before World War II. Uh, I didn't know that until like halfway through my Hearts of Iron 4 career. So after we declare war, this red zone will disappear. Okay, just double check that you have your air up. They have missions, so they're actually doing something. Make sure that all of your armies have something to do. They have a battle plan. And let's click them all on. Von Box over here with the Netherlands. We could leave him alone. The other thing we could do is right before war, make sure that you upgrade your generals. This is going to burn your command power here. Don't worry, that will come back on its own. Guerrilla Fighter isn't the best, but for a speed run, the entrenchment speed gain is uh, good. And I've tested this out many times, so I will pick him up, especially on a general that's already level four. He's not going to get too many different traits anyways. Uh, so Guerrilla Fighter is good. You can only take what ground you can hold. That is one of the principles of modern military fighting. I think we have an upgrade on... Donuts as well, so he could get Lancer Torpedo Screen Penetration and Loading Drill Master. We're gonna have to get later. We don't. We ran out of command power. Okay, so all the battle plans are on. If I right click on Poland, I can declare war. I typically we don't have any allies, but if I had some, I typically don't bring them into the war. They hog up supply along the front, and let's click on around Maginot so that we could go to war with France next. And uh, France is quite the prize. A major nation in Hearts of Iron 4. Okay, so now sit back, relax, grab some popcorn, and enjoy the show here. See, we have 100 air XP. Uh, we're going to be able to go dive bombing. For Germany, um, we're not really going to be using a lot of battlefield support since we're just going mono fighter. For a historical build, I would go battlefield support because we'd be building a lot of CAS. But for this build, let's just go operational integrity. So we'll switch doctrines over here, and this is going to make the fighters detect other fighters and air better and overall make the fighters work better for you. If we we're going to go more like navs, if I'm worrying about uh, naval bombing, I'll go the left. So basically strategic destruction buffs the navs the most, battlefield support buffs the cast the most, and operational integrity buffs the fighters the most. You're just going to have to take my word for that. There's been a lot of research done on these mechanics. It is uh, February 22nd, 2023. So that will change over time. But as of right now, uh, that's how I see the meta. Okay, we got around Maginot into coax uh, France into the war. I go war with France. If you don't get this, uh, France kind of just sits back and doesn't declare war against you. Let's go ahead with an aircraft designer, Measure Schmidt, and then we can get into 
upping the stats on our aircraft. So because this is no DLC, we don't have the air designer, uh, no biggie, but we purchased this uh, aircraft designer, the light aircraft designer, uh, with our political power, and then to apply that, we need to increase just one stat level over here. Uh, so in the current meta, I like going engine, weapon, range, ignore reliability, that stat doesn't work. So we increase engine, that's going to increase agility. Agility is the two hit roll. The weapons will increase attack. That is, once you've hit, how much damage do you deal? So, but first thing that we need to do is hit. So I like going engine first. So we'll go ahead and pick that up. And you see the little badge here. It applied the aircraft designer. Then you can put them into production. Okay, now we are in the peace conference here. This one's going to be very simple. We get these trains, this random equipment, and these guns. Click that off. You can simply left-click on Poland, and then left-click select all. And uh, we will submit those demands, and it does not look like they have a navy, because if you get the By Blood Alone DLC, you'll be able to take their navies as well, which is pretty OP. Okay, so we will... Stop that war, immediately pause, and set back up for war with France and the Low Countries. So, we shouldn't really be attacking the Maginot, because you see all these forts here. We'll be going around. Um, so, <clears throat> let's just put an army on the Maginot. And give them a battle plan. You can put Guderian in Luxembourg as he was historically. Rommel was actually right here. They had several armies along this line, not just two, historically. But Rommel, uh, I think, started off in the northern part over here in Belgium. There's supposedly the first to cross the Moss River here, and then they moved him back to the Gombolo Gap, uh, to basically do pinning attacks up here against the Allied forces in uh, Belgium, Netherlands area. And then uh, Guderian was the army that ra rushed to the ocean over here, uh, executing the Monstein plan um, that Hitler agreed with, or is what he always wanted to do, or whatever. But Monstein, uh, it was his brainchild. Monstein, where was he? He was in Poland right now. Most likely political reasons with the military high command. Okay, let's combine these two navies again. And let's move all the air back over. Okay, so quick trick here to get rid of these, the low supply area is just take, uh, like hit this half button and unassign these divisions. You can send them back to Frankfurt. And what's that? what that is going to do is reduce the supply consumption here in this tight little area. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what happens here uh, when we declare war on the Netherlands.
There's two things that you could do here. You could take all of France, which would seem good, but since we're playing with no DLC, I would rather establish Vichy France because now I don't have to use my infantry equipment to occupy that territory, which is a draw on infantry equipment as well as manpower. So I'm going to establish Vichy France, but just understand that when you get become a better player, you can literally start a collaboration government with spies on France, and that would be superior to this strategy. So we will establish Vichy France, and now I don't have to occupy my territory down here, and now I have a puppet with which I can trade with. Put all the air in the channel, put on naval strike, take off close air support, Keep the fighters up so that you don't lose everything. Put more ground crews and we'll start for the Battle of Britain. And what we want to do here is <clears throat> we want to take out the English Navy to a point where we can cross. Uh, so we'll see if that's possible. Uh, we're still paused. It's June 1st, 1937. Let's take like our best general with the best infantry forces. It's going to be Rommel. And we'll put them on a naval invasion order just to demonstrate this to you. This is going to be RNG. I don't know if this is going to work or not, guys. So we will click naval invasion order. Dover. That's going to put 10 of these bad boys. Uh, the 10 without the red exclamation mark on an order. We're going to take three of them. Unassigned division. Click naval invasion order twice. Click Dunkirk. Put them around Dover. Shift. Left click three. Off on naval. Left click Dunkirk. Right click over here. And assign the divisions. Unassign, then assign the divisions. This buttonology can be really strange. You just have to play around with it. Okay, we got the four-year plan. Let's go autarky. Now what's going to happen here at some point is Czechoslovakia is going to declare war against us. So let's get, I usually like to put two armies over here. We'll get Guderian set up in Dunkirk to make the crossing. I usually only need two armies to take out the UK. So the trick with this is the longer that we wait, as you can see, we're dealing damage to the ships in the channel. The longer we wait, the more powerful the allies will get. So we do want to let our Navy recover a little bit here. Okay, so Rommel's almost ready to go. Let's give Italy a chance. Invite to faction. That's not going to be enough. You need to call to arms the German-British War. And they will start fighting the English Navy for you. So they're going to start having battles all along here. And they'll even move some manpower around that'll tie up the English Navy because the English Navy is going to start attacking um, some of these convoys that are being moved around the map by the silly AI. You can see we're taking out the subs. Usually you'll see the subs taken out first. And then the next thing we need to do is rebase our Navy uh, closer to where the invasion is going to occur. Okay, Rommel is ready to go, so let's put the Navy on Never Repair. Let's put them down to Engage at Low Risk. Put them on a Naval Support mission over here. Take off the mission around the Danish belts. So, Naval Invasion Support. Let's take these subs, and let's tie up the English Navy by just putting them on convoy rating and we'll put them around the British Isle here and we'll see if we can get naval superiority to make the crossing. Let's just go ahead and justify a war goal against Czechoslovakia. Okay, we got Reich's Autobahn and we could simply do the German war economy because it's going to give us a bunch of factories. I guess we could pick up Yalmar Schacht. This is, may, might be a bug. I'm not sure. Oh, we did not complete uh, Sudetenland, so that's pretty OP. Uh, usually he falls off after you take out Czechoslovakia. All right, and we just fired off our naval invasion here. So let's go down to speed four. So persistence 
is key. Okay, so now we have an airport right away. Uh, what we can do here to not affect the supply, don't put your air force over there yet. But what we could do is take some of these guys and get green air just from this airfield. This is only a mile across at its shortest point. And then what you're going to want to do is take the CAS and the tax, take them off naval strike, put them on close air support, put them over in England proper, and then you actually do start off with four transport planes. So go ahead and put them over. It doesn't look like there's a button to select. With DLCs, there's a button to select for air transport. I guess there's no none with no DLC. Our manpower is getting quite low, so our next political power buy is going to need to be uh, manpower. Okay, so you don't get that many uh, that much equipment, but it's still going to help out. And Italy is in the war, so they're over here to the right. And uh, it looks like Italian East Africa and all that is in the war as well. So if we take all these nations and annex them, we're going to have no manpower and no equipment. So the trick here is what I like to do is take all the stuff around Germany first. So like the low countries, Czechoslovakia, and you can handle occupying those territories. That's not going to be a big deal. What is going to be a big deal is all the colonies of the UK. And I'm going to show you here exactly what you need to do to pop it off like the allies basically so these are annexed so i get them um they're inside of germany basically they're still i'm still gonna have to occupy them through the occupied territories tab but eventually they'll raise compliance until they have 100 percent compliance and then we won't have to occupy them at all so that's the first move there we have everything on uh next to germany what we want to do next is Puppet, start puppeting off the UK Empire. Go to the pawn and the puppet tab here, and we can puppet off whatever we want. I'm looking for the Dutch East Indies and Malaya specifically. Okay, so let's see what we did here. So after a lot of jockeying for position, uh, we should have a lot of puppets here. We've got a lot of stuff going on in the occupied territories. As you can see, you could return uh, territories to these nations that you've conquered. Uh, but I'm occupying all these these nations that I got out of the peace treaty. And if you go to the little fire here, you can see uh, how much resistance is building up. But it shouldn't be an issue as long as you're feeding infantry equipment to the divisions that are occupying these territories, you should be able to stay ahead of resistance and it shouldn't be a problem. So don't worry about that. We've got the German Raj here. And what we could do here is request garrison support and let a day go by. They give me a million and a half manpower. So that means all the manpower uh, going into these divisions that are occupying these territories. Like there's 42 of these divisions in Poland quite a bit. Uh, that manpower is going to be provided by the Raj now. So that's going to be quite powerful. So now that UK is done, the Allies are kaput. Uh, we've got Italy in the Axis. We could go to war against the Soviets. Okay, so the Soviet Union is going to be subject to debuffs from the Great Purge. Uh, you could see this under their spirits here. And uh, as you can see, army leader cost has increased. What's a big one? Support unit research speed, negative 25%. Daily command power uh, multiplier, negative 25. Uh, the 
get debuffs to air. Uh, air doctoring costs more. There's just a bunch of debuffs here. So it's good to attack into the Soviet Union early 38. If you improve upon this, you could already be to Moscow by now if you get really good. So just make sure that there's a line of 80s walking back to Germany. We'll finish off those two refineries, we'll, which really won't help that much, but uh, we really need to build this infrastructure. Okay, so now that we have enough political power, we'll go ahead and go to extensive conscription. Training time increases, but we're not training any more men. And as I stated previously, you do not need like more divisions than this. I even have some divisions over here, uh, just in case... The USSR wants to do a naval invasion, just blocking this because that can be annoying. But I would say that this is a pretty balanced amount of divisions on the front. Our biggest problem here going into Barbarossa is going to be logistics. So I would recommend like topping off all these areas as much as possible. Um, and that's going to be your best bet for logistics fulfillment in this area. If you do start on some military factories, that's fine, that's not bad, but you're gonna be building uh, like 60 infrastructure, 80 infrastructure all the way to Moscow uh, first and then spider Manning out after that. Okay, so we now have war with the USSR. Let's go improved national spirit. What we can do here at first, you can either charge in if you're into microing, you can micro your tanks if you're doing a tank build. Obviously, we're not for this. What we could do right off the bat here is just allow them to attack into us. So that's what we're going to do. And you see all the green bubbles. All of my troops are entrenched. All of their troops just lost their entrenchment. I'm Grand Battle Plan Doctrine. I'm happy to be in my entrenchment. So what we're going to do is just allow them to shatter against us for a while here until we start to see the green bubbles disappear like right there and right at this transition point where they stopped attacking is probably a good point at which to attack uh they're no longer entrenched and our battle plan is like maxed out let's check out how we're doing in the air um so kind of vanilla ish here you can micro a little bit, uh, putting more ground crews in certain areas, uh, and that's going to help you get green air. But as you can see, we're rumbling forward. And a cool thing to watch when you're doing Barbarossa is click this. Uh, it's kind of like an explosion thing right here. Um, you can see the two sides, the manpower loss. So the Soviets, as you can see, were trading uh, almost double here. So they're losing twice as many men um, as we're losing. So you know you're doing well if that's the case. Oh, it looks like we could put out a lot more air. So I'm going to give a little pause here. Let's just pick like Warsaw. Let's get out all these air wings. Put them on air superiority missions and give them to a general and just let the AI micro that bad boy. Have an advantageous casualty ratio after having inflicted at least 1 million enemy casualties. That's pretty hot. But we're just because of Yalmar Shacht, which didn't go away, I feel like that's a like really OP. Usually when Czechoslovakia is no longer in the picture, he goes away. Because of him, we're doing so well. Yeah, there's, they're mostly red bubbles. Uh, pfft, starting to really lack fighters. Let's just go ahead and pause for a second here and readjust and wait for that infrastructure to build in there uh, because we don't have logistics companies, which I feel is one of the most uh, is the most OP uh, support equipment in the game um, because we don't have that. We're going to have to rely on our road building skills here. Oh, our war support is getting low. So let's go with war propaganda. That's because we're losing manpower. So at this part of the build, we're pretty much locked in here. So let's go into a time lapse and uh, just watch the rest of Barbarossa take place here.
Okay, so as you can see, it did take a, quite a long time with a little bit of micro, but we succeeded. So the pain points uh, were down here in Sevastopol and up in Murmansk. And I did save my trucks till the last and then I changed motorization priority under my field marshal from horse to truck just to get that final win, that final push, because I knew it, we would be incredibly stretched. Uh, but we made it and we sh are the only ones in the peace conference. So this should be all us here. And Soviet Union will bring in Mongolia and Tanatuva into the fight. So you do get uh, those two areas over here. We'll just simply submit our demands and confirm an exit. And this is what the world looks like now. Uh, we do have a host of puppets and we were able to complete this build with mostly battle planning, only two different uh, production lines and only one army group here. And uh, that's how it's done. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned how to play uh, more of a beginner style video. But yes, uh, you can boil this game down to where it's not as complicated as you would think. And you can win the game. Um, and I just wanted to display that for you today. If you guys uh, did enjoy this video, if you learned something, please leave me a like and subscribe and uh, check out Bitter Steel's videos. Uh, they're quite good, quite entertaining. Uh, he has a lot of country uh, playthroughs uh, that I like to watch on YouTube. So check him out as well. All right. Thanks, guys. See you on the next one.